Can you speak to the all the sophisticated aspects of the Mayan calendar uh, that they've developed? I don't know. You got another five hours? Yeah, let's go. <laughs> I should, uh, I should, no, I'm kidding. I should say that you also gave me uh, the 2024 Mayan calendar. Yeah, I do this just to you know show the world that that calendar system is evergreen. It can go into the future or the past for billions of years in the system they made, just like our system is. So can you speak to the three components here as I'm reading? The Tzolkin, the Hob, and the Long Count? What are these fascinating components of the calendar? It's it's neat how obsessed they they were really math nerds. They it wasn't good enough for them to just make one cycle to describe time. Yeah. They had all these cycles that that interlocked into each other like like cogs in a machine, though they never thought of it like that. Mm-hmm. But uh the Sulkeen's their oldest one, and the one that still endures today. There are millions of Maya people that are living their lives based on a 260-day count. No weeks, no months. It's just 13 numbers combined with 20-day names for a total of 260 days, and then it goes again. Mm-hmm. Everybody in the Highlands knows what their birthday is in that calendar, knows what it means about their personality, and the kind of jobs that they're supposed to do. Each one of those days has their own spirit and what's supposed to happen in those days. The Maya collectively call them the mom, the grandmother, grandfather spirits. And 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 they talk to each one of those days and they pray to them. They have there's now an association of some 8,000 people that are called Aki that are day keepers who are keeping the days. And they're also like community uh, psychologists almost. People come to them and say, you know, my life is mixed up. What's wrong here? Well, uh, let's ask the mom. Like, okay, well, it looks like you're not doing this or that. Or, you know what? You're an accountant. You're not supposed to be an accountant. You're supposed to be, a, you know, a, a midwife. What are you doing? You're you're living your life wrong. You're a, you're a, you're a keeb. You need to start being a keeb first. So they take extremely seriously the day on which you're born, what that means, like the the spirit that embodies that day. Right. Like the, I'm I'm keeb. I'm 13 keeb and it says my it's funny how accurate a lot of them are. Mine is basically <laughs> is uh I'm a I'm an irresponsible husband and parent, but people like me, so my family still prospers. Like, well, God, that's that's horribly <laughs> that's horribly accurate. I mean, it's, <laughs> uh, some of it is also the chicken or the egg. If you truly believe, if, so if you structure a society where this calendar is truly sacred, then it kind of like you manifest a lot of the the spirit does manifest itself in the life of the people that is born in, on that spirit's day. Absolutely. It's interesting. And and the and the Maya really feel this in this system. So that's the core system. This 260-day calendar was the very first calendar they made thousands of years ago. And it's the one that's most important today. Uh why 260 days, by the way? Is it's, there a reasoning behind it? Uh from most Maya agree with this today. And you know, who knows what the original architects thousands of years ago were thinking, but it's nine months. It's the human gestation period. So if you if you conceived on the day 13 monkey, chances are your kid's coming out on or near 13 monkey. And uh, I think it's beautiful. I mean, if, if that's right, that means the Maya and the people of Mesoamerica will all share it together. Um, when they thought about, we need, we need a count of time that's for us. They didn't look up into the heavens. They looked like into their bodies. What's the first cycle that we actually go through as humans? And they pick this nine-month thing. It, it really is our cycle. And no other culture on the planet looked inside themselves to create their calendar like that. Uh, so that's the oldest one and the sacred one that still carries through to today. Uh, what's the second one, the hob? The hob is the solar calendar, the one that everybody on the planet eventually comes up with. We know it's second though, because when they start talking about it, they use all the symbols and the numbers from the 260 one. Mm-hmm. They say, well, we need a solar one too. Let's just keep counting this another 105 days and we'll get to 365. Oh, interesting. They kind of carry the same, uh, got it, right. got it, got it, got it. And that's useful because 
for all the sort of agricultural, all this kind of reasons. Right. Though interestingly, they never put a leap year in. The hob is also called the vague year because it's just 365, which means every year they're off a quarter of a day and eventually it starts really adding up. Yeah. In fact, it's even caused modern, modern problems. In this calendar here, I just do the straight math from a thousand years ago. Mm -hmm. And so I place the beginning of the solar year differently than some Maya groups do, especially the guys in the highlands of Eastern Guatemala. They write me nasty emails saying, I don't know what time the year is, but their relatives changed it in the 1950s because their agricultural cycle was so far off. Mm -hmm. They moved it 60 days back to make it in the spring again, but it drifts, which is strange because it's not a very good thing for the the agricultural cycle. It's one of these mysteries we still don't have an explanation for. Uh, so that's the hob. And then what's the long count? The long count's their really mysterious, cool one, because it's a linear count of days, which are not like them. It's a, it's a bunch of cycles like ours. You know, our weeks are a cycle, our months are a cycle. Um, but it's weird in that its estimation of the year in the in the long count system is only 360 days. So it's miserably off uh, a solar year. Uh, they count in base 20. So they count, like we count in tens, we're decimal. They count in base 20, vigesimal. And so it should be, you know, there's ones, there's 20s, there's 400s, there's 8,000s, there's 160,000s. It's up, it goes just like our 10s, 100s, 1,000s, 10,000s, but it's times 20. Mm -hmm. So that third, so they have days, months of 20 days, and then they have these years that are, should be by their math, 400 but it's only 360, and that throws the whole thing out of whack going further up. Then they have a 20-year period and a 400-year period, 400 years to their calendar, but it's only, by that time, it's only 396 years in our period, in our reckoning. So it's, it's mysterious that it's, why did they tweak it at the year to be only 360 days? That's, you know, that doesn't follow any astronomy, that doesn't, that's not the human cycle. Yeah, but they're, I mean, it's interesting that they build up towards thinking about very long periods of time, like Bucktoons is 144,000 days. Right. Or uh, a Bucktoon is 400 of the long counts years. So it's kind of like our millennium. You know, we, we think yeah. it's a big deal when we hit a millennium or a, or a, or a century. That's... A, they have a 20-year period that they do a lot of celebrations on called a Katun, and then they have the 400 Baktun, which is the big one. That's like their millennium. And 13 of those Baktuns uh, occurred in the creation before us. They also think that we're in, that the world has had multiple creations. They're not alone in that. There's lots of ancient civilizations who say that, but we're technically in the fourth creation, and they're they have a creation story called the Popol Vuh. And the Popol Vuh is clear as day that the third creation ends with the help of these heroes called the Hero Twins, and the fourth creation begins. And so on the Maya monuments, we see them doing the math through the long count, and we can calculate it back very exactly. It happened, the fourth creation started on August 11th, 3,114 BC. And it says, it doesn't say it's day one. It says it's the last day of the 13th Baktun of the third creation, which leads us to believe that a creation is only 13 Baktuns long. Right. So, and this would be the fourth creation. The calendar this starts. The fourth creation. But if you do the math going from 3,114 right. BC, and count 13 Bach tunes forward, you get to 2012. And hence the uh, the very popular notion that 2012, whenever that was, December, something December like that. December 21st, 2012. Will yep. be the end of the world. Right. So can you explain this 
Oh, about. those were very fruitful years for me. I had so many lectures around the country. That was, that's like a, like Garrett Morris in Saturday Night Live. The, 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 the apocalypse was very, very good to me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, but that that is pretty interesting. So that's that that would be so technically would be in the, what in the fifth. No. Yeah, technically we'd be in the fifth. Though my argument was that actually, if you look through all the corpus of Maya mathematics and calendars, they never say anything like that. In fact, there's a handful of dates that tell us uh, that that the fourth creation does continue farther on. That that Baktun place should have twenty. 20 Bakhtuns in it, like their counting system would dictate, not 13. And there's there's a place in uh, in Palenque, there's a place in the Dresden Codex, and one other place I'm forgetting that, uh, that all talk about time after 2012. So how does that happen? It's a conflict. Is there supposed to be an overlap of the... Of the t of uh, the third, so it's like thirteen is the core of it, and it's twenty long. They they love the number thirteen. It's all over the place. It's a magic number to them. My explanation, which I admit is is not very solid, but uh, I think that the magical deeds of the hero twins in their creation story at the end of the third uh, the third creation hit the magical reset button mm -hmm. and that it just restarted time right there because of their magic. But that was not to say that the natural Bakhtun cycle should be 13. And there are certain texts that, uh, that go way forward in time or way backward in time. And whenever they want to do that, there, there are higher increments than just the Bakhtun. Above that, there's the Pictoon, then there's the Kalabatoon, then there's Alawatoon, and it goes on and on. And these are like, you know, 160,000 years, huge increments of time. Whenever they want to do that, and they talk about a long period of time, they start putting 13s in all of those increments, those higher increments. And I think what they're saying is uh, they're making an esoteric statement about the never-ending na nature of time. That's that's what I think they're they're telling us in those texts that time goes on forever, magically. But they they still had a conception that it didn't go on forever before, right? That there was other civilizations that came before, and there and there. This is the fourth creation. This is the fourth creation, and the gods made everybody. the The first ones were made of mud, and they melted. The second ones were made of sticks, but they were jerks to the animals. Um, the, the third ones were like us, but, uh, but flawed yeah. in some other way. And then we're finally made of, uh, of the blood of the gods and corn. We're made out of corn. So we're, we're perfect. And as the, as it explains to us, the, the Popol Vuh does, we got it right this time. There, there is, there, there's no reason to believe that this creation has a set duration. Well, one of the weird things is that the Aztecs, who we talked to a lot at Contact, they also had the concept of multiple creations before us, but they were real clear to the Spanish that they weren't all the same time element. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them were in the 300s of years. Some of them were in the 700s of years, but they were not the same time period. So our... Our mathematical logic that if the third creation was 13, this one must be third creation, is in, or also be 13, it's in direct opposition to what the Aztecs told us about the nature of creations. They're different time periods. Why do you think there was the myth of the previous creations? Did they have some kind of long, multi-generational memory of prior civilizations? It may have had some echo in the uh, the flood myths. Right, it's the same. It's the same kind of major myths carried through long periods of time. There's a lot of different opinions about it, and you know, they're like if they were all thirteen, if we have five creations, like the Aztecs said, and they were all thirteen, 
they would come up to roughly 25,000 something years, which is very close to that processional cycle. So some people are like, they designed it all to be one completion of the procession of the equinoxes. And I mean, they, the, <laughs> That, I don't believe that one, but that one sure sounds good, doesn't yeah, it? That's that's going to get a lot of internet hits. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the things I do obviously uh, wonder about is um, why the flood myth is part of like most societies and most religions. I think that one's pretty easy. It's the end of the ice age when the bathtub filled back up. Huh. So it's just the ice age. It's, just, it's, the, it, it's the seas filling back up, and they, without really understanding what happened, they just carried the, that story. Everybody yeah. knows that everybody's nice coastal village went underwater, yeah. <laughs> and they had to they had to seek higher ground. And then, just like people like talking about the weather, everybody was talking about the weather for many generations as the sea level was going up, and then. Uh, that that myth carried. Why do we live here, Grandpa? Well, we used to live over there, but then the water came. <laughs> and then many grandpas later, it just kind of permeates every idea. It becomes mythology, but global mythology. So that one, you know, there's a lot of things I don't have a reasonable explanation for, but the uh, but the flood myth is almost certainly the the rise in sea level. So the this idea that every day represents uh, uh, that carries a spirit. Uh, you know, there's modern day astrology. You, you know, most people kind of consider astrology this um, maybe a bit unscientific, woo woo type of um, uh, set of beliefs. But do you think there's some wisdom that astrology carries from your scholarship of the Maya calendar? Do you think if we carry that to the astrological perspective on the world, do you think there's some wisdom there? I don't know. You know, they, they, I, I have a woo-woo part of me. Mm -hmm. I, I, I would like to believe that stuff, but I don't think as a scientist it makes, a, I cannot come up with a biological, scientific reason why that would be true. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you look at it objectively, I mean, really is, Everybody born with the sign Scorpio, a, a a moody person. That's just uh, that's just objectively not true. Um, but it is funny how oftentimes these these Maya uh, horoscopes, for lack of a better word, do hit the mark. There was some student who surveyed like three hundred people with the app I made and asked them about their Greek sign and their Maya sign and his conclusion for his term paper was that the Maya one was working way better, which that's, that's fascinating. At least that's, that's fun, but no, I'm, I'm, I think I'm too much of a scientist to believe that I, I just don't have a, a, any foundation in science that would allow us to believe that the, uh, the month in which we were born in a cycle sets our personality and destiny. I agree. And yet there's so much mystery all around us that uh, what I do like is the uh, inbuilt humility to that worldview. Um, that there's this whole, you can call it a spiritual world, but a world that we don't under quite understand. And then you can wonder about what is the wisdom that that world carries. And then you can construct all kinds of systems to try to interpret that. And then there is where the human hubris can come in and, you know, uh, but it's good to be humbled by how little we know, I suppose. I do love the mysteries of the world and I, I, I would, I would love to find an ancient civilization, but I don't, I, I don't want to solve the mysteries of the world. I think they're one of the things that make world <laughs> life worth living. That's true. <laughs> That's true.